Hello all, my name is Krishna and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today in this particular video, we'll start the OOPS tutorial in Python where we'll be discussing about classes, inheritance, how to create static methods, how to implement uh, inheritance with the help of Python, how to create instances inside the class, and we'll also discuss about private variables, public variable and protected variables also, which is basically just kind of a data abstraction. We'll also try to see what is encapsulation in Python, uh, how to do it with the help of OOPS concept. So there are a whole lot of things that is going to come into this particular tutorial and uh, we'll discuss in depth itself. So let us go ahead and try to understand what exactly is class. So the first question is what is class? Now you can definitely define as a class as a something like a real world object. Now if I take an example of car, car is one a real kind of a real world object in short. And inside car you have various attributes like you have windows, you have doors, right? These are basically an attributes. And we can also define some of the functions inside a car. Some of the functions are like you use car for driving purpose, right? And uh, each and every driving, like when you're driving that particular car, there are different, different speeds that you'll basically be noticing in car, okay? Like if you, if you select some car like Audi and BMW, right? They will basically be having high speed with pretty much good, smarter features. So in short, if, if I just talk about class, they are a real world object which has some pro properties, attributes and functions. So we'll try to see how we can actually define a class with the help of Python. So first of all, in order to define a class with the help of Python, you have to use a keyword called as class. Now let me just define class as one car, okay? And inside this, I want to define some of the properties. But initially, before defining any properties, I'm going to make this class as an empty class. So for making this particular class as empty class, I'll just write pass. That basically means I don't have any properties defined yet inside this particular class. And initially I'm just showing you one bad way of creating a class. And later on we'll try to move towards writing in a proper manner, like how should we actually define a class and how should we define all the properties and functions inside it. So let us go ahead. Now in the next statement, what I'll do is that we can initialize an object from this particular class. Now an object, so in short, if I just talk about this particular class car, it is basically a blueprint, right? So instances can be created from this particular class. So if I just consider one car as one class, you can have any number of classes which can be derived from that particular class, which can be instantiated from that particular class. I think I should not say derived, but instead I should say instantiated. So let me just show you how to instantiate from that particular car class. So first of all, I'll say car one and here for instantiating, I'll just use the same class. And this is basically just like a constructor. Okay. So if you are from other programming background, like .NET and Java, you basically write like this one. So once I execute it, okay, it is saying the class is not, oh, sorry, it should not be class here. I'm going to write it as car. Okay. So car with open and close braces. Now I'll execute it. If I just go and execute car one, you can see that it is basically a, a car object is basically created at this particular memory location. Now, if I want to define some properties, suppose I want to define like this. So I'm going to say that uh, uh, car one dot windows. I'll just say that how many windows it may probably have. So I'm going to initialize it to five. Okay. So I may also say that it has another properties like how many number of doors it has, right? So here, you know that for a particular car, it has four doors, right? And I'm not just considering the back part, but instead how many doors are present in that particular car. Now, when I execute this, I've created this particular instance. Now, if I go and see the car one dot windows, right? So here you will be able to see that it will just give you the option that how many windows it has, it has somewhere around five. Like this, in the similar way, you can create any number of objects. So I can say car two of car. Now this is an another instance, okay? And this instance is not similar to this instance. Over here, again, you can define car two dot windows. Suppose this particular car has three windows. Suppose I'm just taking it as an example. This car just has two doors, right? So something like this. Now, if I go and print this particular car information now, so here you can see that car dot windows it is showing me three. Now remember guys over here, when I'm creating this uh, properties over here, it may be that if I use this particular approach, some person may also create another property inside this. So suppose I say car two dot, uh, suppose engine type. So here I'll say the engine type is petrol. Suppose I'm just saying like that. Okay. So uh, I'll just write it as engine type. 
and I'll execute it. Now you can see a way if I print it, right? And if I write car2 dot engine type, you can see that it is showing me as petrol. Now it may be happening in such a way that if I have not fixed the number of attributes, right? Any, any number of att attributes can be created by the developer. So this is a very bad approach. Now in order to make this approach right, what we do is that now I'll just go back to my car class. Now, instead of just using pass, right? There is a very good inbuilt function inside class. And how do you see that inbuilt function? Suppose here is my car one, right? If I write dir of car one, and if I execute it, here you'll be able to see one very good inbuilt function, which is called as underscore underscore init underscore underscore. Now this particular init function is basically act, it acts like a constructor, you know? So if you are from other programming backgrounds, so you probably may be knowing what is a constructor. So constructor basically gets used in order to initialize how many number of properties are getting used inside that particular class, okay? So what I'll do is that I'll define this particular uh, I'll call this particular initializer or I'll say it is constructor. So I'm calling this and here inside this, first of all, you will be using one self parameter. Now this self parameter is plays a very, very important role guys. I'll just tell you in a while what exact role it plays. Now what you have to do is that while you're initializing the object for of a particular car, like how you're initializing over here, it is always possible that you need to provide how many parameters or how many attributes it is going to consider inside that particular car. So here I can say that, okay, window is one attribute. Okay. Door is one attribute and engine type is one attribute. Suppose I've considered three parameters. Now inside this, I will start creating my own variables. That is the attributes inside that particular car. So in order to do that, I will be using this self attribute. Now, the self is basically getting or it is considering this particular object. It is basically directing to that particular object. It is saying that for this object, right? For this object, we are going to initialize for one parameter or an attribute, what value it should have. I hope it is making you understand, but let's see an example over here. Now I'll write self dot, right? Self dot, I'll say that, okay, my first attribute is my window. So I'll say windows is equal to this particular window value, which I'm assigning to it. Here it is. Then what I'll do is that I will go to my next line. I'll say self dot door is equal to door. Okay. And I'll make it as doors. So this is the attributes that is present inside this particular car object. Then after that, I'll just write self dot engine type is equal to engine type. Now, once I execute it, you can see that it has got executed perfectly. Now, we have some information over here. First of all, we have defined a class called as car and inside the init function, it is basically creating three attributes. One is windows, doors and engine type. Now, if I want to initialize this variable again, or if I want to initialize an object from that particular car class, first of all, if I just execute this like this, right, it will give us this kind of error. It will say that in it missing three required positional arguments, window, door, and engine type. So in order to do this, what I'm going to do, I'm going to provide the parameters like four comma five comma engine type. Suppose I say it as petrol. Okay. And guys, uh, I'm just taking an example. Don't <laughs> consider that engine type need to be petrol or it, may, it can be of various versions also. So once I execute it, now you will be able to see that it has got executed successfully. Okay, now the most important thing, what is happening as soon as I call this particular class? Now you should understand guys, over here, as soon as I call this particular class, by default, this init method is called because this is my constructor. This will initialize the variable or the attributes that I have defined over here and what value it should have it will take from this particular parameters. Now here you can see that when I write car, okay, and I provide the parameters at 4, 5, comma petrol, right? This is getting initialized for this particular variable. So window is basically having four, door is basically having the value as five, engine type is basically having the petrol version, petrol string. Now, what about this particular self? Now this self is basically getting initialized for this particular object. So this self take the reference of this particular object and for this object, the windows attribute will be set to this particular value. The door attribute will be set to this particular value and the engine type will be set to this particular value. And this is what I'm actually explaining you about. 
Now, as soon as I created this particular instance, let me just create another instance saying as car. And here I'm going to say that, okay, it is three comma four comma diesel. Suppose I say it as diesel. Okay. Now, once I execute this, right? So this has got executed successfully. If you see over here, now what I'll go and do, I'll just create a cell below. And now let me write it as print car one dot windows. Now you can see this, I'm calling this attribute, right? So as soon as this is getting executed, you can see that the car one windows is actually four that will get printed. So once I execute it, I'll just go up. You can see the output is basically four, right? Now, similarly, you can do a whole, a whole lot of things with respect to this. We can also see different, different uh, features that are or different, different attributes that are basically present. So if I write car, car two dot, uh, for the car two, I have actually selected the doors as four. So let me go and print this particular value. Now you can see that I'm still getting four. Okay. Let me just print the engine type if you are interested into that also. So here you can basically see that the engine type is actually DC, right? So this is how you actually define an initialization constructor. And this is pretty much simple and easy. Now, let me just show you one more thing. I can also create one method saying that uh, what suppose I want to understand like what is the engine type from this particular method. Suppose I write it over here as saying as define um, type underscore engine. Suppose this is my method or just let me just show you that I'll say that okay one of the method of the car is like self driving. Okay, so self driving is one of the method of the class. So I'll say that again the parameters over here will be given as self. The reason I'm giving it as self because if I give self over here, I'll be able to access this attributes that I have initialized in the initialization constructor. So I'll say self and then I'll say it as engine type. Okay. Now in the self driving, it will just return some message saying as this is a, this is a petrol or diesel car and I'll use dot format and I'll replace this placeholder with self dot engine type. Okay, so let me just remove this. I don't want to provide this parameter because I will not require it in short. Okay, so this is what this particular function is doing. And this function is present inside this particular car class, right? So as soon as I execute this, I'll execute car one. And let me go below and just call car one. So car one dot self underscore driving. Now, if I call self underscore driving, one thing that usually should happen is that it should return this particular message saying that this is a petrol car, right? And over here, you can see that it is taking self, right? Now self will have the value of the engine type from this particular object because this self is nothing but it is a reference to this particular object. So when I execute this over here, you can see that it is showing me, a, okay, so I have to call a method, sorry. So here you can see that it is giving me a message saying that this is a petrol car. Pretty much simple guys, you can understand that these are my properties, right? These are my properties inside my car. This is the method inside my car. Now this car can be inherited by an Audi car, BMW car, you know, Maruti car or any kind of car that you want. And I hope you got the basic idea of how to create. And this is a very good way of creating a class guys. And in most in, in the real world IT industry also, everybody uses this technique where they'll be creating an initialization constructor, they, where they'll be using different, different inbuilt functions to basically define all the classes. And the main use of is that, guys, you will be able to reuse this class many number of times in different, different purpose. It helps you to do the, the reusability technique that we usually require when we are writing some real world scenario, right? So uh, this was some basic understanding about the OOPS tutorial uh, with respect to classes. Uh, in my next video, I'll be teaching you more about inheritance and different concepts in OOPS, that is object pro oriented programming language. So I hope you like this particular video. Please do subscribe to the channel if you are not already subscribed. I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day ahead. Thank you one and all.